Bien, como ya sabéis, los agentes de IA es la palabra de este 2024. Y bueno, Microsoft está presentando sus nuevos agentes autónomos que amplían tu equipo de trabajadores pues muchísimo más utilizando este tipo de herramientas. Vamos a ver un ejemplo en directo. Y bueno, el, ya el 60% de las empresas de Fortune 500 están utilizando bueno, estas aplicaciones de Microsoft 365 Copilot para acelerar los resultados empresariales. Así que básicamente es uno de los productos que eh, más beneficio les está dando estos días a Microsoft y vamos a ver el, cómo poderlo utilizarlo, ¿vale? Aquí tenéis el vídeo, este ejemplo bastante claro de eh, un caso de uso que podéis utilizarlo. Thank you, Satya. I'm sure many of us are familiar with McKinsey and Company, one of the most successful management consulting firms on the planet. Now, for the experience is literally everything, and they're always working hard to ensure that they're streamlining and improving every touch point with their clients. So imagine our delight when they agreed to partner with us to use Copilot Studio to create an autonomous agent to streamline a portion of that client experience. Let's take a look. It all starts with an incoming email from a prospective client, much like you see on the screen right here. Now, previously, they had had people on the back end essentially receiving these emails, parsing through them, and figuring out what to do next. Who should it be routed to? What expertise did they have in the firm? But this is where the autonomous agent comes in. Now, an email comes in, and the agent springs into action. What you see here is that it will begin to parse out the email, moving through the ambiguity of human language to, for instance, find out what the engagement's about, to check the engagement history, to also map it to their industry standard terms, and then finally to try and find the right person to take the next step within the firm. With all of this information in hand, the agent then goes about writing an email that takes all of this information and summarizes it for the receiving partner. And what you see on the screen is exactly that. In comes a whole bunch of human written email, the agent processes it, summarizes it, and sends it to the right partner in the firm to take that very next step. Now, it's worth pausing for just a moment here to reflect on what you're seeing. It happens so fast, you, you might miss it. But essentially, this agent has been given a loose set of instructions, kind of like you would to a human, and it deals with all of the messiness of human communication, figuring out what the right next touch point is for the customer. Now, this is magic, but it's only half of the magic, because now we're going to go behind the scenes to see how easy it is to actually create an agent just like this. For this, we will move over into Copilot Studio. Here you see that we have programmed up with McKinsey the agent, but not using a sophisticated programming language, instead using natural language, the same way that you would tell a colleague to get ready to do this task. You also see that what makes this agent autonomous is that we can set what's called a trigger. In this case, the trigger is set to watch an email address and to react immediately when an email comes in. But in fact, you can set it to look for events across a whole wide range of systems sitting there working for you 24-7 waiting for an event to come that gets it going. You also, just like a regular human colleague, add knowledge. Here we see a Word document, a SharePoint site, and a database about engagements. But of course, you can add additional knowledge sources. That includes line of business systems like SAP or ServiceNow or even databases. And finally, to finish up what you give this agent to do its work, you give it a set of actions. And we saw those in the flow. These are actions that include things like pulling out the relevant information or summarizing what a human has written. All of this together makes the agent powerful because it can deal, again, with all of that ambiguity that a human throws at it. Now, what we saw was one email coming in about one new client engagement. But the exciting thing here is that this scales. How does it scale? Well, to see that, we'll go over to the activity pane where we can look at the long list of engagements that it's working on. Zooming in up top, for instance, we can see that it's worked on over 1,300 engagements and there are 33 in progress. If we want more details, we can go into the analytics tab. What this means is that this agent is always working on behalf of the firm and that's very exciting for us. Now, from here, 
we also see that although the agent's amazing, it does sometimes need some human help. So we're going to jump into a case, the second from the top here, where we will see that it gets a little bit stuck. As you look, it's gone through those steps that we saw previously, but it's stuck here at that one where it's looking for the partner. And if we zoom in, we can see why. Here, for instance, we see that it's picked the right partner, but that partner has now left the firm. It has an instruction that says if that's true, it needs to escalate to a human manager to give it someone else to go to. Now, to see what that looks like, we're going to switch over to Copilot and see that interface with that human manager. Here at the bottom right, you will see that a notification pops up in Copilot. Then the manager gets all the information he or she needs and can provide the right person to route the email to. Back at the ranch, going back to our agent, we can see that it takes that information and fills out what it needs to do. Now, we're excited about this because of the business value it can drive. McKinsey in its trials has shown that it can reduce lead time by 90% reducing administrative overhead by 30%. And as you look at this list, what we envision is an orchestration layer, just a bunch of agents that can be out there helping individuals, teams, and entire functions to streamline and automate their processes, no matter what industry they're in. And they're so easy to make, anyone can do it. You design and set these copilots out to work in Copilot Studio, you interact with them, bueno, pues hemos visto el, para qué valen este tipo de, de tareas, de agentes, así que básicamente los nuevos agentes, no solo la gente de Microsoft está trabajando en esto, sino cualquier empresa involucrada hoy en día en tareas de inteligencia artificial generativa y básicamente pues te reducen, como hemos visto, esos cuellos de botella. Una empresa X recibe cientos de email, etcétera, al día y tienes que procesarlo, hay un trabajo de procesamiento que lleva a una persona a analizar, ver la, la viabilidad, ver si se lo tiene que pasar a una persona a Z o X, y todo eso se puede empezar ya a automatizar, porque ya sabemos que la inteligencia artificial generativa puede entender, extraer a qué persona se lo deberían hacer, y como veis, dice que acelera el proceso en un 90%, esas pruebas iniciales que han hecho, y les ahorra un 30%, de aquí lo vemos, era esta parte en la que lo estaban comentando, básicamente pues que le permite unos ahorros del, del trabajo administrativo del 30%, es decir, el piloto mostró que el tiempo de espera se podría reducir en un 90% y el trabajo administrativo en un 30% y Donson Reuter eh, construyó pues el, el agente eh, de nivel profesional para acelerar el flujo de trabajo de diligencia legal con pruebas iniciales que mostraron que algunas tareas podían realizarse incluso en la mitad del tiempo y este agente pues puede ayudar a aumentar la eficiencia del trabajo para los clientes e impulsar su nuevo flujo, ¿vale? Vemos la idea, eh, se van a empezar a utilizar a gran escala este tipo de agentes porque pueden hacer este pretrabajo de filtro y luego pasarlo ya a la persona adecuada que pueda hacer todo esto. Vemos que eh, ya hay 10 tipos, aquí nos están indicando pues el primero que te puede permitir agente de calificación de ventas es una profesión donde el tiempo literalmente equivale a dinero y este agente permite a los vendedores enfocarse en las oportunidades de ventas de mayor prioridad mientras el agente investiga los prospectos, ayuda a priorizar oportunidades y a la iteración de los clientes mediante correos electrónicos y respuestas personalizadas también el agente de comunicaciones con los típicos proveedores. Este agente permite a los clientes optimizar su cadena de suministro, minimizar interrupciones costosas, detectar retrasos, responder en consecuencia. Es decir, imagínate una tarea muy simple. Eres, estás, tienes un, un, un e-commerce y vendes cosas. Tienes que detectar que un pedido, por ejemplo, pues va a llegar tarde al cliente. Eso crea fricción, sobre todo si no informas al cliente etcétera, pues eh, podrías detectar, se puede hacer de otras maneras, pero con inteligencia artificial puedes extraer qué pedido va a llegar tarde, enviarle un mensaje en lenguaje natural, etcétera, y el servicio de atención al cliente pues te eh, mejora sin necesidad de una persona humana, lo cual, pues bueno, es ahorro, está claro, y agentes de gestión del conocimiento del cliente y la intención del cliente, un negocio tiene una sola oportunidad para causar una buena impresión, y estos agentes pues, son revolucionarios para los equipos de atención al cliente. 
estos agentes trabajan de la mano con el representante del servicio al cliente aprendiendo cómo resolver los problemas, ¿vale? Así que, como ya sabemos, va a haber muchísimos agentes y aquí hemos visto pues, Microsoft, que es una de las empresas que ya está trabajando seriamente en esto. Espero que os haya gustado el vídeo. Como siempre, darle like, suscribiros y nos vemos.